I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. Today we're back on the 69 Charger. We're gonna start by getting some heat and getting this undercoat off on this video, and then hopefully we'll start cutting out the floor pan, the trunk pan, and the other rusted metal. So stay tuned, let's get this car cut apart, cleaned up, and prepped for sandblasting. So the idea on this charger and tearing it down, I'm going to try to start from the front and work my way back for the most part. We're going to have to jump around a little bit on some inner structure, but I am going to start. I have the oxyacetylene torch with a rosebud tip, and you see I'm just heating this up and getting all this um, undercoat scraped off the car. I'm doing it right now first because right behind me is an open garage door and it's real easy to let the air come out. I got a fan blowing on the other side of the garage. Just trying my best not to breathe any of this stuff in. I probably should be wearing a respirator. Be safe at home. So if you have to wear proper equipment, whatever you have to do, make sure you don't burn down the shop. Just take safety serious first. Think about what you're doing. Um, you can also use a map gas cylinder. This is within reach of the torch, and you see the torch with the rosebud tip, that's um, the different flame on the front, is basically heating the area real efficiently and allowing me just scrape it off. Now that we got the undercoat off on the front end, we're going to go ahead and start working on the floor pan and everything else around here, cutting all the rust we can out of this car. You see I'm going to work with the wire covers over the rockers. We're just taking a drill bit and I'm working out the factory spot welders. And we'll take an air hammer and just whack them right out. We're trying to save these. I'm assuming we're going to put them back in. We'll get them blasted, get them cleaned up. And then that will be the last thing we end up doing after the new floor pan and everything's put in place. Honestly, on most of the cars I build, I usually don't put these back in. Most of the time, they're the first to rust out, and the owners, they're just not really worried about it. They'll put a different clip out there, something to hold down the wire harness neatly in some loom under the carpet. So, a lot of times you won't see these, but I'll talk to the owner. I believe on this car, we will go ahead and reinstall these because they did come out so clean and in one piece. Very salvageable. Onto the floor pan now. What I'm doing right here, I'm going to cut out the shift assembly for the automatic shifter. Uh, one piece along with the column. I'm trying to get everything where I have measurements to put them back in. So doing this, taking this out one piece, setting it on the side in my parts storage. And then when I'm ready for it, I can go back through it and know for a fact I don't have to take pictures. I don't have to double check my measurements I could do them on the spot the one piece of advice when making these rough cuts for the floor that I can suggest is don't go cutting down brackets don't cut down the middle of the shifter you see I even just went around the seat brackets I'm pretty sure they come with a new floor pan but not a hundred percent so we're gonna leave those on if I gotta go salvage a bracket here or there we can't find we can't buy new it doesn't come with it We'll go back through it and cut them off this floor pan. So moving on, we're just making the rough cuts around the perimeter of this floor pan. I'm cutting around the frame rails, trying not to cut the inner rockers. I'm just working my way around so you'll see after we cut it with the cutoff wheel, we'll be able to go back through with an air chisel and remove the rest of the edges and the factory spot welds. I have a plasma cutter. Um, my plasma cutter works very well. I try not to use a plasma on actually most of these cars unless I'm custom fabricating stuff. I just think the cutoff wheel for me personally keeps me grounded, keeps me focused, gets straight lines, and I don't go too fast with it. Moving on to the front of the car, I'm tracing the bottom of the frame rail to make sure I don't cut it. It's kind of a hard rail from the top to identify where it goes versus the side and the back area. So for me, it's easier to climb under this jig and just use the cutoff wheel and cut right. At least make reference marks and then I can move to the front. The camera's a little shaky. It was sitting on the car and I'm obviously air hammering the car even on such a solid base. So just bear with me on this. But what you see I'm doing with the air hammer basically is working my way up the spot welds and just ripping right through them. I'm kind of working my way around them, breaking them. There's going to be spot welds still left in 
all the areas for the most part you're going to have to go through with a grinding stone set belt sand or something to clean them up but the idea is when we remove the main floor pan with these rough cuts now that I'm doing on the passenger side it makes drill um, hammering up the spot welds a whole lot easier mostly because you could tackle them from different angles I skipped ahead and I didn't show you in the video but I removed the torsion bar support frame rail I just worked that from the edge over um, to me it's easier to be able to access the torsion bar and when we go to cut that off it'll just be easier to drill out the spot welds in there so even if I am removing a frame section I'll remove the stuff on top of it just so I can access it and verify more measurements that's what I'm doing right now. You can see I did leave it on this portion of the video. This took, what, 10, 5, 10 minutes to remove this part of the floor pan. It's not that hard. We're just in the rhythm. Looking at it from this angle, you could see in the right-hand corner of this torsion bar support, there's nothing there. This car, I mean, I'm surprised it was still staying up in the torsion bar wasn't twisted or anything under this car I did take a bunch of measurements from our level frame jig and everything looks like it was set in place so the floor pan was the primary thing holding this car together so you can see right now I got the spot weld cutter out I put the air hammer away just for a second and we're drilling out spot welds the reason we're doing it here and nowhere else is because these floor pans are the same gauge thickness. These spot welds are really strong welds. And I'm trying to, at this point, save these rear foot wells. The owner wants to keep them. So we got the main floor pan sitting under this area. So the easiest way to do this is weaken the spot welds by drilling them out. And then we'll come back through. You'll see with the air chisel and we'll be able to rip this right out with minimal damage to the floor pan right here you see how fast I can go and you see when it pops up we're not ripping anything there's no marks left over this is how to cleanly save a panel but also separate two panels now I have to take the cutoff wheel the factory can't get the spot welder their factory spot welder on this angle back here so you're gonna have a factory stitch weld which is basically um, a lap joint weld in a sense that they're putting one two inch little stitches in there take a look at this do you see how rusted this piece is these are the two areas in the joints between the floor pans the reason I'm showing you this is your car may only see a little bit of rust but that's the tip of the iceberg every panel on this car that's joined together probably looks like that those two floor pans were not really rusted out the owner was pretty gung-ho about keeping the real foot wells but now that we look at it the more you start looking there's rush just in between there wasn't proper rust prevention in between these panels when they welded them so this is the outcome if you're looking at buying one of these cars just be aware the rust you see is the tip of the iceberg it gets worse and worse so we'll get it fixed Here's a shot of our rust pile and our parts coming apart. So you can see we got most of the floor cut out on the 69 Charger. That's our rust pile down there. It made a huge mess on the floor. So we'll go ahead and kind of wrap it up for the night, get everything cleaned up. I got to shoot the owner um, an email because what we're looking at, these inner rockers on both sides are a lot worse than we thought. You couldn't really see them with the floor pan and there was a lot of undercoat under this car. Always watch cars with undercoat because I always see they're always a lot worse than you initially thought. Actually, most of these projects, if you're going to dip into a car like this it's probably going to get worse than you initially thought looking at once you come apart this is what you find the rockers kind of waving you could see this thing's full of a uh, mouse nest in here in this hole right where the torsion bar support was and like i said it's kind of weak in spots on this side and that side um, we're going to have to rebuild the front frame rails a little bit you see that's been rusted out we'll have to go back through this and finish cleaning the areas that we are going to keep the frame rails look okay we're going to blast them this is another look at the jig that we built for our torsion bar support and then also on this rear pan over here you can see i did drill the spot weld holes here 
and that's going to just make it easier. The spot weld holes are right there. I didn't want to damage it with a air chisel. So where we're at right now, like I said, we're going to clean up for the night. I'm going to get the car flipped around. It's kind of buried in the back corner since it's such a long car and we'll get the back kind of pointed in the open working area and we'll start cutting on the quarter panels in the back end and we'll come back to cleaning up this area later down the road. So stay tuned and we'll start on the back. So as I said, it's a new day, car spun around, I got it nosed in the corner. Wherever this car sits in my garage when it finally gets the metal put on, I'll have it probably nosed in the corner as there's not a lot of work we got to do on the front. But we'll go ahead and remove the bumper. After that, you see I put a one inch tape line on the quarter panels. I believe, we don't know for sure, that this car is just getting a quarter skin on it. That may be due to parts availability. I believe the owner was talking about doing a full quarter, but I don't even believe at this point in time we can get a full quarter. The good thing about this car is the top of the quarter panels are in really good shape. You see the bottoms are not salvageable. And the more we dig into this car, the more you'll see that we're going to have to replace a little bit more parts than we thought. But we'll go ahead and outline the quarter panel. I know already we're replacing the outer wheelhouse. So I'm not really worried about digging through or cutting that at all. Um, if you are keeping the outer wheelhouse, just be careful on that cut. As I said right now, replacing the outer wheelhouse. So what I'm doing again is doing my rough cuts. I like to go through, do my rough cuts around brackets and anything. And then I'm going to come back through with the air hammer and do the same process basically as I'd done with the floor pan. Once you become proficient with the air hammer, that's how I would usually try to attempt this. Air hammer as much as you can. You don't waste a lot of stuff. I think you... Don't damage as much metal when done properly. I sharpen my air hammer blade a lot when I feel like it's not cutting and more pushing. Um, but yeah, you can see we got the outer wheelhouse off. I'm working my way on the rear trunk pan slash trunk extension. What I'm trying to do, this charger's got basically a shackle mount off the main frame rail we are replacing that but again i want to take a lot of measurements i want to verify that this car's straight so i'm basically cutting around all the frame sections in here to be able to access my um air hammer air chisel in there to cut those off take our frame measurements then we can remove our small frame sections and verify everything's back straight when we weld it up I want to stress something very important that I feel and really the number one message on the channel. When you're doing major frame, chassis, body modifications like this, I feel the key to everything is the frame jig. That level I-beam right now gives me the confidence where I can just start cutting parts apart. I can work around frame rails. I'm not worried about anything twisting, popping, or moving. If you're cutting a car apart and you hear a pop, that is a bad thing. From decades ago, trust me from experience, getting it back together, you, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. So we don't cut these cars up unless they're on a frame jig. It's like I said, gives us confidence and you're going to see as I go along when we're cutting this car apart, the more I start cutting, I realize I don't have enough mounts on my jig, but the mounts I have right now are more than sufficient for the amount of structure we still have on this car. But you'll see as this process goes along, we're going to have to add more mounts to this car as I find out in the future we're going to end up cutting more and more of these structural key components off this charger so be aware you put mounts on the car it's not the only mount you're going to have to do you could see another look at our frame shackle mat mount right here I did center that off the shackle in the back that's going to be a part that is removed on this car that last quick segment, I did just rough cut the floor pan just to give me access because right now I'm going to work on the rear valance under the tail panel where the bumper basically hides and covers up. On this charger, we're going to try to keep this tail panel. There's nothing wrong with this tail panel. It's in really, really good condition. So 
Same thing on that toe foot pan. We'll go ahead and drill out all the factory spot welds to make sure we do not damage it. The good thing about this too, when I go to weld this tail panel back up, it's already pre-drilled with our holes exactly where the factory had them. So we're gonna have the same support as the factory did when welding this back in in the exact same factory locations. Not that, I mean, the factory really, they jumped around a lot. You see variances in these. But as far as this tail panel, it's going to go together the exact same way with the MIG welder as it came apart. And you see when we use our air chisel, it just easily, just I'm pulling on it, making sure nothing's jammed up. What I don't want is to damage this panel at all. And this was a su successful removal. You see, I got one spot right here that was kind of working me a, a little bit harder, but the rest of it just pops right off. We drilled out the spot welds up to the point that the quarter panel's coming off. At this point, I took my cutoff wheel and we're gonna just hack into the rear valance. That's gonna let me expose to the rear frame cross section and work the mounts out of there and off the floor pan right now the rear balance the floor pan I'm trying to separate those two channels both are junk so I'm not worried about saving every anything but I'd still need to get both the pieces out separated to make it a little bit easier on me there's no way of taking this out one level without removing the tail panel. So we're going to do this in small pieces, dissect it down, and taking our time will ensure we don't damage anything else we don't want to damage. I'm cutting the rest of the quarter panels I started removing earlier. See, we left the corner brackets and the quarter panel, what's left of them, attached to the rear balance, and we're basically just removing everything on the back end around the tail section. I got one or two more spots that still was kind of just hung up a little bit and you see it comes right out. If we were doing full quarter panels on this car, I would go ahead and remove the tail light tail panel section and then basically start just cut off wheel and the rest of the rear end apart. We're working on to the floor brackets right here. They are stitch welded in. Same thing as the floor panel. So we're going in and we're going to cut the stitch weld. These are going to need to be replaced or there's some repairs that's going to have to be done on it. We'll address that when we get to it. At this point right now, the main thing is cut the stitch welds, get the brackets off, and then get to the floor pan and the frame rail section. This is why I did that rough cut on the floor. Like I said, I can get in both sides. I can get under things a lot easier and work things out from different angles. These brackets are going to be a little bit more stubborn since they are stitch welded. Anything stitch welded, I mean whether it be from the factory or someone restoring this car 10, 20 years ago that just started stitch welding something, butt welding, it's going to it's going to be harder to remove with the air chisel. But we got it off. You see there's some rust underneath, no big deal. We'll go ahead and address the floor pan on the frame rails right now. You see I grab one corner and I find a a process where I could just peel up the floor pan and I just keep working at different angles ripping up the spot welds. A key to this, wear gloves. You see I go through these gloves at the end of this video they'll be ripped up and destroyed. If you do not wear gloves your hands are going to be ripped up and destroyed. All this metal is sharp. It's rusted, it's sharp, and it's gonna cut you. I don't care how tough you are you're gonna get tons of cuts and you're gonna be the, they're going to be stinging down the road. So in general, just wear a good set of gloves, whether they're kind of disposable. Don't buy the most expensive gloves because even the best ones I've used, this metal is going to cut them and rip them. As you can see, what we're doing, we're kind of reversing the process we started with this car because, you know, we started on the front. We were kind of working our way towards the back. Now that the car's flipped around, I like to tackle the back from the very tail section working my way in. It just to me is easier. Um, I could climb in the car. I'm not fighting anything. So just come up with a process that makes sense for you. There's not to say that this is the right way, this is the wrong way. The idea is to get these panels off, everything that's rusted and gain access to everything that needs to be repaired whilst not damaging anything you wanna keep. So just keep that in mind and tackle it how best you feel. Again, no right way, no wrong way. Just do what makes you comfortable. 
I will also say with every car, even on the same models, the process is going to be completely different. Some cars you're keeping certain parts, some cars you're not keeping other parts. So when you're doing that, the removal process is going to be completely different. Usually cars that are completely rusted out that could just hack the whole front end or back end off. Man, the removal process is a whole lot easier when it's jigged up and I know where my mounting points are. I believe it was my last video on this Charger, the introduction video where I said we can keep these rear window tracks in place and they're not going to get in the way doing quarter panels or anything we have to do. Well, the plan changes. Talking to owner and assessing this car, the inner wheel wells have a lot of rust on them. The inner rocker panels have a lot of rust on them. We're going to go ahead and remove the inner wheelhouse and the inner rocker panel. Saying that, these now rear window tracks, which we thought wouldn't be in the way, are going to be in the way. So, we'll go ahead and remove them first. When you're going to see, the next process is going to remove in the inner wheel wells. There's a lot of reasons why I think removing the inner wheel wells on this car is um, the way to go. One, they're rusted and thin, especially this passenger side one. The driver side one was a little bit worse. But saying that, we've gone this far, and to do a correct factory, really good install with my spot welder, we're already doing all this that I can set, you'll see the process in the future, but I can build the inner and outer wheelhouse separate outside the car, factory spot weld them, and then roll them in together, and factory spot weld them into that front inner structure piece, and do everything like the factory would. Also, this allows me to remove the trunk pan a lot easier, and it also helps in the trunk pan installation, especially with my spot welder. Now I could spot weld the whole trunk pan all the way around where we don't have to MIG weld halfway up to it. So those couple ideas I think are going to make the installation on this car so much better, the final product turn out better, and save the owner time and money in the long run on a part that automatically had to be patched up and repaired anyway. I would say if these inner wheelhouses were in close to perfect shape this would be a different story but you see they really are far from that so at this point we're going to just take the step and just remove them i also if you look on the back by the trunk supports i added uh two bars on each side as i said the more you cut off on this car the inner wheelhouses are a major support structure in this in this car and most cars so doing so we have to add support holding the whole back of the car in place so nothing moves everything on there is measured it's been referenced written down and it's now a new bar holding the whole back end of this car taking the place of these inner wheelhouses just think about when you start cutting stuff apart before you cut it what's going to move what's going to change it's easier to think about before than have to react after cutting out the other wheelhouse you can see the support again is on this side. I went down to the frame rail and I went to right under the trunk latch support. There's a really, it's like a double metal there and a really strong piece. And basically that's holding the whole back end of this charger up. I still would put those supports on there even if we were doing full quarters and it was removed just to hold the package tray up. We're working our way now on the front of the rear trunk pan uh, where it lays over the rear seat pan we're just using the air chisel and just popping it right up in place we got the inner wheelhouse rough cut out now so that gives me access on both sides to remove the floor pan going down the hump and then i'll come back through now that i have my air chisel out and we'll finish removing you could see the inner wheelhouse is still on the inner structure so we're going to use the same process with the air chisel and get behind all those brackets and just pop them off the same exact way that we're doing right now with this trunk floor take your time on the rough cuts especially to me it's easier to go back you see i cut around all these brackets some of them i went wide some of them i knew exactly where they were it sucks cutting this inner structure to go back and replace it not saying you can't fix it if you don't have to it's just better off that way and you could see coming in here just ripping the trunk floor the other way and that is after this piece comes off on the other side that's a complete removal of the trunk floor so we're going to go ahead and get the rest of the inner wheelhouse out by drilling out the spot welds and taking the air chisel to make sure we don't damage anything. You could see this car, 
We've taken a lot off so far. We're going to take a little bit more off. Some people like to do one panel at a time and replace something new, clean everything up. To me, personally, I feel this is the most efficient way to do it. I don't think it hurts the integrity of the car when we brace everything up. And so to sit there and remove everything at once, you have all the tools out there and just get into cut mode. And then now that we're going to put new panels on, everything's more adjustable and we can move our gaps around while not moving to suspension at all. You know, the rear shackles are in place. The front mount, you could see a mount right there is welded in place that those aren't moving. We're not worried about this car down the road going to be dog walking or anything like this. But you could see we could sit there and... I could blast this car one time, get everything clean, put everything in epoxy metal one time, get everything sealed up, and then we can go back through and address the small patches that we're going to take. At that point, we'll have our shipment of our new metal, the pieces that we didn't account for, and then we can go ahead and start installing them. I am now, like I said, we had to remove the inner rocker panels everything i said on the earlier part of video trying to save these foot wells really we didn't have to do it because the plan has changed and we found out we got to add more more metal while doing that to get the inner rockers full rockers now in the car we are going to have to sacrifice this part of the uh, foot pan sometimes parts got to be sacrificed like this um, there's really not a good way to save it as you see it goes right against the inner rocker panels it happens. These parts are available. They're not that expensive. So we're going to save the time on blasting them, cleaning them up, and you see just removing them's not that hard. It was the same process. We just moved our spot weld cutter back to the main foot pan and then removed these foot wells. Another good thing about removing those foot wells is it gives us a little bit more access to these front frame rails that we can really clean them up there, spray some epoxy, and just blast it. Now we got that footwell removed, we're going to go ahead on the inner rockers. I think this was the right call by the owner. I think the inner rockers play the key role along with the outer rockers. They're a little thicker metal and that's the whole structure of the car. Especially if you don't run a subframe kit or any kind of connectors, which we're not doing on this charger you want a good solid inner rocker foundation the good thing about this car and the high hopes is that outer rockers you could see right here are really in good shape i kind of figured that on the intro walk around video that we assessed that there wasn't a lot of rust on them so that's why we're doing it this way you could see this thing was loaded up with mice nests in the front we already knew about that from the hole in there so just digging it out and we'll just keep cutting it kept kind of catching on fire so be aware this is our reason that if we didn't remove this inner rocker how do you get to the mouse nest how do you get it out at this point it's stuck in there and we already know it's in there i mean i guess you could take a vacuum in there but you're still not gonna get everything stripped out I was talking to owner, we're going to get these outer rocker panels in a good epoxy, we're going to sandblast them, and they're going to last for years to come. Following what I said earlier, you see I didn't cut the rear seat brackets, the support brackets for the rear seat, I bent them down, and then what I'll end up doing, I'll go back through with the air chisel and popping them off, just in case we have to reuse them. They were pitted up real bad, you can see here we are, there's more mouse nests in the front of this that we weren't aware of. But again, we'll address that. You're going to find this in the car. The whole top of the car had mouse nests on the inner structure too. So they were living in this thing, which is not a big surprise on anything that sits. You could see I'm also cutting these rocker panels out in smaller sections. They're a little bit thicker of metal, like I said earlier. So it's going to be easier if I just section them out, bend a little bit. And now with the air chisel, you can see I have to work them a little bit more. But I can just work my way down it and just, just keep pushing it off and ripping it little bits at a time. I think it would be hard. I've done these rocker panels. We come in through the bottom with the air chisel, and it takes forever. To me, it's easier to just cut down the middle of them, not hurt any of the brackets or where they're pinch well together, and then just air chisel them right out. 
So the next step in this process, I'm going to add some jig supports to these rocker panels. I didn't cut, you see, the front bracket off the frame rail going to the inner rockers off at this point. We're going to jig this point up, make sure the rockers don't move, add our brackets, then we'll come back and finish the removal of these rocker panels. Moving on to the rear shackle frame mounts that we're replacing. Before we cut them off, we're going to get some reference points. You could see how they curve in. The top bracket matches the two inside brackets of the inside frame rail where the support is. So we're going to use those as major reference points when we go to install them. They're the same on both sides. Also, when I built my jig, I made sure I lined the edge of that frame right up in line with that round bar on both sides so that's where we know how far out we got to go if we're not there we know we're wrong i'm also measuring centered on the shackle and we're going to put this mark right down the middle of it it's a half an inch on a one inch diameter bushing in there so we're going to cut our mark straight down and that's going to be another reference point to go off when we put these rear shackle mounts back together now that we got all our measurements in place, we're going to go ahead and cut these brackets off. We already have them on hand. We know we're replacing them, and we want to access the frame behind it because I know that's going to need some repair also. So just go ahead and we're going to cut these off. We'll come back through with the air chisel after we drill out the spot welds once we get the main brackets off, and then we'll drill out the spot welds and then air chisel them off. It was kind of fighting me a little bit. I missed one spot, but you see we got it off. And... I found on this side it was easier probably just taking the sawzall and just ripping right down the bracket from the rear to the front. You live and learn once you do it a second time you find an easier way. So in the future take a sawzall, cut right down the back of the bracket and it'll come right out. Still we're going to have to go through with the air chisel and fix it right up. We're now moving on to the inner rocker removal. You see we, when we cut out the whole inner rocker, now we're coming back through with the air chisel and cleaning it up. We are also going to get the main brackets off that front corner. You saw I just removed it, and now we're working our way for the rear. You can see before I remove these brackets, the jig points coming off the jig to the bottom of the rockers are set in place. We just wanted to do that now that we're moving the main support of the car to make sure nothing moves. So everything's welded on the rocker panels, two spots on each side, holding the rockers in the whole side of the car while we cut the frame rails tying into the rocker panels and the major structure there. So we know nothing's going to move and we have confidence when we can just slide this rocker back out. When we put the new rocker in, we're going to try to come back in the same way. We started this video off with removing undercoat. Now that I got the whole floor pan off the car, we're going to end it. And the last step in this is going to just be removing the rest of this undercoat underneath the car. Um, you can see I am wearing a respirator now. I have the Goggles on, everything. Um, this is how you should be doing hazardous stuff like this. A regular N95 mask won't work. Respirator is what you need to do. Um, but again, this is the same as the front. Just heating it up, scraping it right down, and just getting it all removed in preparation for sandblasting. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. The undercoat and the paint underneath actually look really good. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, we cut down... Most of the car, we got most of the rust off, which was pretty much the whole bottom of the car, but we're going to do a quick walk around. And after this, I still have some work to do to prepare the car to get ready for sandblasting. But you can see in here, we had to roll up the floor pans. That's to, and then the bracket, you saw that in one of the videos to get the inner rockers out. There's no other way to get the whole length inner rocker. And it was really rusted out back here. You could see I did some frame supports on this side. I got two of them holding the inner rocker. Rockers, that really strengthens up the car. Um, I still have to, like I said, go through and clean up all this area from our air chisel. I'll take a grinding stone and do that. Back here on our rear frame support, we got some uh, rust holes. And you see there's our mount where we were jigging up the center. So that's a half an inch on our shackle point. 
the rear, we are right now keeping this part of the car. For the most part, it shakes a little bit, but with these two supports in here, it's really um, strong. Again, nothing's moving up here. That's the height we want. If you look inside the frame rails, we are gonna blast them, but you could see our, our pins for our rear frame, thing, uh, frame rails. So they hold them in place. I mean, they can move a little bit, but for the most part, that's where we want them. We took our measurements off our um, shackle mounts. And if you look around to this side, we got some frame rail repair in the back. Again, same area over here needs to be done. Our frame thing, our frame mount in the back is also there. We'll have to cinch these down when we go to put them on there because um, they just came up a little bit. This is why you need jigs because we know between this and this exactly where we want these two frame rail sections and the shackles to sit at. We also jigged our front spring perch here. Now this side, you see I got three bars on this side. Now the reason being, this is my main support holding like on the other side to make sure this side's strong. I also did take the lead out of the channel with the torch, but back Back here, this area is a lot more rusted and there's holes in the bottom. I have a feeling we're gonna have to section in and repair this part of the rocker. So this area right here isn't welded. You could see I can actually lift it up off there. So if I cut this out, I'll just put this on and this is used as a jig point and a reference more than actually support where these two are gonna hold our support. So. Same thing over here. To get the inner rocker out, we had to take that around. Um, looking at inside the car, the front frame rails, they need a little bit of patchwork. We got our jig for our torsion sabart, and you can see there's some rust on the outer rockers, but I think for the most part, they're really strong, solid, not too worried about it. We are keeping that rear floor pan section. That's about the whole, the only thing we're keeping that and the two frame rails on the whole bottom of the car. So stay tuned to this car. <clears throat> we removed a lot more metal than we thought we would have. Um, usually these cars are like that. If you could see the rust, especially if you're seeing holes where you could put your hand in frame rails, expect your car, especially your Mopar really, to end up like this, to do it right and get it roadworthy. With the amount of rust on this car, this thing wasn't going back on the road unless it ended up like this. Luckily, we were able to jig this car up, rip it all apart, remove all the rust, and then we'll be able to get it back on the road and the car will be done right for years to come so if you like the videos stay tuned we're going to start putting this car back together after we get end up cleaning it up and do some small patchwork on it uh, like comment and subscribe to our channel and thank you for tuning in